Hey everyone, this is Alex here. So rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. I'm not dead, I'm very much alive. Uh, and I've just been busy with my PhD, trying to graduate, and um, after that, find a way to feed myself and pay rent. Uh, but today's not about that. Today we're gonna cover two topics. The first is how to make pre-mixed media. Uh, here I'll be making LB, but you can make any type that your lab uses. And the second one will be a little bit controversial uh, uh, for some or maybe a little sketchy and that's how to microwave media when you need uh, solid media in a pinch right now you know um, so First things first, the actual premix media. Yes, you can buy premix media from the usual manufacturers. However, uh, you pay a premium for the privilege of having uh, premix media. Now, you can make it uh, yourself without too much effort and without too much expenditure. Uh, and once you have the setup, then you can, uh, you know, save money and save time in the in the long haul. So, really, it's pretty simple. First of all, you need to go to Amazon. I'll provide links, or you can go to Walmart, wherever you get, you know, your uh, uh, cheap crap, basically. Get yourself a magic bullet, uh, a blender, it comes as a set, and get yourself a couple of extra of these pods and a couple of extra lids. Uh, because what that allows you to do is a, a allows you to make media inside these pods. You grind them in the pod, you mix them in the pod, uh, and you put a lid on, slap a label on it, and then you just keep it right there. Um, and we use it for a couple of different kinds of media. We do YEP, we do LB, we do YPAD. Uh, so if you use a lot of different kinds of media and you're tired of weighing things out by um, uh, or weighing things out one by one it's uh, helpful to make a, a batch at a time with one of these beauties. So we'll be making 10 liters worth of LB media so LB for one liter we're gonna need 10 grams of triptone 10 grams of yeast extract, and then five grams of um, salt, and we're just gonna multiply that by 10, and we'll have 100 grams, 100 grams, and of course 50 grams. So the caveat here is that you want to grind your most um, granular substance first, in which case uh, here is the salt. So we'll go ahead and grind the salt first, and then after that it's actually gonna be more of a mixing operation inside the blender to uh, blend everything together. Uh, and then after uh, we're done mixing it, uh, we're going to make some uh, quick, dirty, and highly effective microwave plates. So let's go. Okay, so here we are in the fume hood. Uh, again, we're here just to keep the dust down a little bit. And uh, the nice thing about this system uh, in actually doing the grinding and mixing in these containers is that uh, you don't need to then take the media from this container and uh, transfer it somewhere else, somewhere else, again, generating a lot of dust. Uh, so this is uh, essentially we're going to grind, mix, and dispense from one container, okay? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our 50 grams of salt and grind it up. This is going to get loud, by the way, so headphone users, you may want to, uh, I don't know. Now, we're gonna give this one more go, but one major caveat, okay? Um, when you're grinding powder in this, um, in this little mini blender, don't walk away for more than a couple of minutes because what'll happen, this, this is all plastic, okay? And usually when you're making a smoothie or something like that, there's liquid inside to act as a heat sink to absorb the heat 
uh, from um, from the grinding action. But since, since it's just powder in there, um, the blade can actually really heat up the plastic and melt it. So I walked away once, uh, I you know, I, I figured, hey, let's let it grind for like 20 minutes. Don't do that. Don't do that. You'll melt the plastic and ruin it. So just do it in bursts of a minute or two. Give it a shake while it's grinding. You know, it's not dangerous, but um, let's just take a look and see where we're at right now. This is just the salt, remember? So you can see the e uh, extremely fine particles of salt rising up. But um, as you can see now, hopefully the new camera will focus for me. Come on, Betsy. Well, you're gonna have to take my word for it, but right now, the salt is, uh, I would say, the consistency of powdered sugar or icing sugar that you get from the grocery store, and that's exactly what we want to mix with the other ingredients. I'm gonna give it another, you know, a couple of bursts, and then we'll go on to the next steps. So in goes the yeast extract. And in goes the triptone. Cheers. When you've added all your ingredients, then you just cap it up. And blend it till it's uh, homogeneous. So, uh, and we'll use the blender to do that. Now we're just gonna let that settle for, I don't know, a minute or two and then we'll come back and take a look. Okay. So let's see what we have for our efforts. Now, if you can see that it's perfectly smooth, perfectly ready to be dissolved and ready to be eaten by your E. coli or Whoever, uh, whoever you decide to grow uh, with this media. Now all that's left, really, cap it with one of these caps. We'll provide links for that too. Label it and you're good to go. Now you have enough, um, uh, now you have enough premix for 10 liters of media. Okay, so for trick the second, let's paint a picture, okay? It's late at night in the lab. Um, you're getting ready to plate your cells, uh, uh, E. coli, yeast, what have you. And you look in the fridge and there's only one plate left. Either the person before you used all of them up or uh, you uh, completely forgot to make plates uh, that day. Uh, and you know what? Instead of playing the finger pointing game, instead of giving up, um, uh, we need to forge it forward and we need to make some plates. But, uh, again, painting this scenario, uh, there's a cool party that's happening in, let's say, an hour or something like that. Uh, and we need to be balanced human beings and we need to go to parties. So, you have an hour and you need to make plates. Uh, it's late at night, the autoclaves are closed. What do you do? Well, uh, the answer is right here in front of us. It's uh, this magic invention known as the microwave. And some people may fr uh, frown on this trick. Uh, they may not. They say, may say that it's not, uh, you know, sterile or uh, the you know the quote unquote proper way to do uh, do things. But um, it saved my bacon many many times. And the plates that you can make in a microwave uh, are uh, comparable in quality and what you can get from an autoclave. Uh, and they last more than long enough for you to get uh, the results that you need. You know, if your plates, if um, you let your plates sit around for months and months, maybe they'll start to grow at a slightly higher proportion than autoclaving uh, because uh, microwaving, I don't think it will get rid of spores. But 
uh, as a quick and dirty solution, if you have half an hour, an hour, make some plates, you know, you just want to forge ahead, then this is the way to do it, okay? And I'll show you how. Uh, just for the love of God, don't tell your thesis committee that I told you this, okay? So, uh, get yourself a large uh, beaker. This is, what, half a liter? Um, and one thing that I should mention, uh, try and use these sort of old school caps. Uh, and what's nice about them is that they're quite heat resistant. And we're gonna need that. So do uh, ha get a half liter bottle. And let's say we wanna make I don't know, a handful of plates, like a half dozen. So we're gonna make 200 ml of media. We're going to uh, bring water up to 200 ml uh, in this bottle. And there, then we're gonna add the appropriate amount of LB premix, okay? And the appropriate amount of agar. So I'm just gonna do that right now. And before I forget, after you've added the water, you're going to want to throw in one of these uh, Teflon-coated uh, um, uh, stir bars into your uh, bottle. And don't worry, it's not going to wreck your microwave and it's not going to wreck your stir bar, okay? All this is is just a bit of Teflon around an iron bar, and as long as it's in liquid, it's not going to, you know, uh, spark or anything like that. So just throw it right in there, okay? And use it to mix up your uh, media. Now, as long as we're keeping it classy, uh, it's often a good idea to use a funnel to add uh, lots of powder to sort of a thin, um, thin mouth uh, bottle like this. Uh, and we're just gonna mix it around on a stir plate, okay? Uh, for style points, you wanna use a Swedish uh, Cold War era uh, style one, but uh, it's up to you depending on what you have. Okay, so all mixed up uh, as well as we can anyway. Um, I mean obviously the agar is not going to dissolve, but uh, yeah, here we go. So put it right in the microwave. Uh, another super important caveat, okay? Wear your safety goggles and for, for all that is holy, make sure that the cap is loose, okay? When you're microwaving any sort of media or agar, always make sure the cap is loose, otherwise there's a chance of this exploding. Um, this is adva advanced technique, okay? Advanced technique for advanced users, so just be safe, guys, okay? So you're gonna put the media in the microwave uh, with the cap off. And we're going to set it, let's say five minutes just to start. Now, don't walk away from this for, for 10 minutes or something like that, okay? Now, you're just gonna wanna sit here and wait. Uh, don't go anywhere for, you know, 10 minutes or something like that. Wait until the media starts to bubble, okay? Just when, um, just when it starts to foam up, be ready to hit the stop button, okay? You don't want this foaming everywhere. And of course, while I was yapping, uh, it started to foam. So, when it's when it begins to boil, what you want to what you're going to want to do is go and put it on the stir plate, okay? and then stir it some. And that's just gonna help dissolve everything, okay? It's not gonna be clear right now just because we just started, but uh, it will give it another probably three or four boil overs, let's just call it. All right, let's see if we can catch the moment when it just, just begins to boil. You see that? Stop now. Exciting stuff, guys. Exciting stuff. And as you can see, it's starting to get clearer and clearer. Now, when you're getting close to the end, your media is going to start looking something like this. 
Uh, and when you feel that it's uh, ready, um, when you're ready to stop microwaving, and it's sort of a, it's again, this is a bit of a uh, play by ear sort of method. So let's say after six or seven times through the microwave that it's boiled up and then you stopped it, uh, you're gonna get a nice uh, clear media and then you're just gonna wanna mix it really slowly, not to introduce a ton of bubbles. Uh, and you're basically ready to pour as soon as it cools down. Um, depending on the type of antibiotics, you want to make sure that uh, you let it cool down a bit before, uh, before you add your antibiotics. And one thing that's uh, extremely handy for that, uh, and actually even when you're doing plates properly, this is extremely handy, uh, is are these infrared thermometers. And what's nice about them is that you don't actually need to stick your uh, probe or your thermometer in anything to get the temperature. So, you know, I can get the temperature of my hand uh, and I can get the temperature of the media. Now, uh, you, you know, you may say uh, it's um, inaccurate for you to uh, shine an infrared beam at glass and get an accurate reading. Uh, however, I found that's actually not the case, um, at least for the purposes of media. If it were a couple of degrees off here or there, it's not a big deal. So I'll, I'll shine it at this opaque label and then also at the glass and you'll see it's fairly similar. So we're at about 100, you know, 98, 99, 100 on that label. And then on the glass, we're about 97, 92, 95. Uh, so it's a much better way uh, rather than, you know, uh, the old school method is if you can still hold the bottle, then you're ready to add your antibiotics. Uh, I have quite a big tolerance for heat or high tolerance for heat. Um, uh, so I, you know, uh, for different people, you may be adding antibiotics at, the, at different times. Whereas with one of these guys, you can just wait until it gets to, you know, 60, 65 degrees C and add your antibiotic. And there we are guys, uh, we're ready to pour. Um, get a magnet, this one was salvaged from a hard drive. Use it to hold your stir bar on the side. Get your uh, friendly bottle holding pal. Uh, and pour your plates. This is going to take forever to set, and then when it does set, it's going to be wet as heck, right? Last bonus trick, okay? You're in the flow hood. You have fresh air coming through. All you're going to do is you're going to take your plate, put it right near the air source, and you're just going to open it up and leave it there. Nothing's gonna happen to it. It's gonna set quicker and it's gonna dry out so that you don't, you're not left with a bunch of liquid when you try to spread your cells. And there you go, guys. Uh, that's how you quickly make plates in less than half an hour. Uh, hopefully that this will help you in those uh, trying and difficult times uh, where you wanna forge ahead. Um, obviously, this isn't uh, a direct substitute for an autoclave, 
you know, if you if you left these to sit in a fridge for a few months, you may get uh, some growth after after a while. However, um, generally speaking, you're not using these for long-term storage anyway. You're going to be using and disposing of them within, uh, you know, two to three days. So, anyways, hope you guys learned something. I'll be providing links for the. Um, for the blender and the accessories uh, on the blog and in the description and uh, have a nice day. Take it easy and be safe, okay?